the question says that in the first week, the farm will have 2,000 kgs of vegetable. By the end of the week, 10% are going to be sold. So I'm going to be left with 0 0.9. And uh, 80 kg is going to be grown. So this is plus 80. This is what the question says. And the question says, and the, and the question add this in for me. The question says, at the end of each week, it's going to continue. Right? The question says, every week, this is going to be happening. You, because the question gives me this additional information, that's why I know I just need a first few terms, right? I can really decide that the pattern is going to continue. I don't need to do general proof because the question really tell me the general thing. Okay, so <clears throat> let me progress to the second week, which is going to be still the same. We have this from the second week. And by the end of the second week, 10% is going to be sold. And the farmer is going to grow another 80 kg of it. I think I'm going to start to categorize them without changing the numbers that are given to me as much as possible first. So I think it is going to be like this, 0 0.9 square plus uh, I will put this 80 and 80 multiplied by 0 0.9 together just to justify the pattern that I'm seeing. I mean, actually I'm already seeing a pattern, okay? But to just justify it, I think I'm going to go for one more row. So 2000, 0 0.9 to the power of 2 plus 80, 80, 0 0.9. This was from the previous month. And um, from here, <laughs> according to the question uh, from the previous month, then 10% is going to be sold and 80 is going to be grown. If I were to multiply this in, we will have uh, this 0 0.9 to the power of 3. Then regrouping all those with 80s together, we will have a 80. Then we will have this times this, 80 times 0 0.9. This times this, 80 times 0 0.9 square. This can help me to imagine what that is going to be happening for the nth week already. Because I'm already seeing a pattern. As long as you lay out enough, usually you will see a pattern. If it is, if you find that you cannot see a pattern, then maybe just lay out a few more. Okay, that, that's how we see pattern all the time. Summation is going to be the same. When you are in your childhood, it is also the same. Okay, if you put everything into the box, jumble them up together, right? You will never be able to categorize the toys. You know, when you're in a childhood, you know, you have to throw them out so they can put them into proper boxes according to colors. According to you, know, you have to lay them out first. So. Uh, let me try to see the pattern, okay? What that is consistent from row to row will be this, this, 0 0.9. Okay, what that is changing from row to row, I will put in that extra effort to read it. To the power of 1, 1. To the power of 2, 2. To the power of 3, 3. So, sorry, to the power of 3, 3. So here it should be to the power of n. Then plus, this is going to be a sum of a GP. So I'm going to apply sum of a GP formula. The consistent thing is uh, 80 as the first term, and the common ratio is going to be 0 0.9. Okay, and, and this is where I think some of us may make a mistake, okay? So just in case you realize you are recognizing pattern but you are inconsistent, there's a good chance that you have been using the formula wrongly because you didn't use the formula according to what it is, okay? It is a bad habit, I would say, which is like, for example, here, okay? Here, I think what some people may tend to do, right, is to write this as n minus 1. Maybe, maybe. Okay, because some people see that it is 2, then power 1. 3, then power 2. So n, this must be power n minus 1. Okay, some people may do something that is like this. So if you, were to, if you see yourself with the potential of writing n minus 1, correct this bad habit, okay? What is the bad habit? The bad habit is ask working with algebra too much in the secondary school, which was a good habit then, because algebra that is in secondary school, you work on the, the, the mechanics of the algebra. So you don't really need x to represent something, you don't really need y to represent something to work on the mechanics of algebra. But when it comes to A-level, right, you cannot, con you cannot keep working on algebra when they represent nothing, right? I mean, then how will the algebra help you to solve real-world problem? So when it comes to a level, you realize that more and more of the algebra, more and more of the symbols, more and more of the, the alphabets that are given to you right, represent something. So let's try to adopt the habit of uh, exploring beyond the alphabet, but what does it represent? 
especially if it actually represents something. So in the formula for APGP, the N in the APGP formula represents the number of terms. Let's not redefine it as power, 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 power. It is not the power. It represents the number of term that is there. So let's count it again. One, one term. Two, two terms. Three, three terms, not the power. Three, three terms. That means N, there must be N number of terms. So this is going to be to the power of N. Okay, it's very, very easy. It's just whether you want to do it or not. You know, just last week, a J1 student was asking me exactly this. You know, eh, how come my answer is different? She spotted everything correctly, but she just transferred the power, not the number of terms, but she transferred the power into the formula. And, and I know it is very easy. Whatever that I can reply the student via WhatsApp, right? I know it is easy enough. So I told her, eh, it is uh, that, that power, right? It's the number of terms, you know? Oh, then she said, oh, yeah, yeah. Then soft, problem soft. You know, it is just, you know, putting in a bit more effort to see what it represents. Okay, let's try another one.